Just sing into that. <laughs> Wait, you about to sing into that? Hold it just to just to remember what he's saying. Oh. I do it all the time. Are right, you ready? You don't want to record on to in straight into a mic? You don't want a mic? No, you don't got your interface. I got my interface. All, I mean, all we're doing is just so, just so he remembers. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was amazing. Whole new direction from Bush Dawson. Yeah, sample that. Are right, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, are there two lenses? Yeah. Oh. How do you, um... Is it possible to shoot both ways? At the same time? Yeah. I don't think so. Let yeah. me yeah. actually, I'm gonna put this down. Huh? I'm gonna put this down. What you got to say for me? Like, I, 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 I used to be out in these streets out on that G shit. Mm -hmm. Now I need to act like I'm dyslexic. A, B, I'm on that G shit. <laughs> You know, I, I I love it, man. I love this shit. I've always loved this shit. And it's like, even watching this now, I'm getting just as excited as I did when I was like 16. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah. You know, another reason, that's why it's like, I, I, I got to just, from now on, I got to just talk to the fans, you know what I mean? Because um, these the, the, the people in the press and shit, they don't get this kind of thing. Like what I just broke down to you. The influence, like the DNA, the blueprint of like someone's flow and all that shit. That's not something any um, publication will ever talk about. It does. It doesn't benefit the artists. <laughs> I know a running theme of all these videos is that like I'm always complaining about the industry, but like it's there's a reason. It's a predatory place. And 
I'm trying to get the word up. But yeah. I I love I love this shit, man. I always would love this shit and I'm never gonna stop loving it. And like, yeah. People like Cameron and all these dudes, like diplomats, they set a precedent for me. And I have to like live up to a standard. Even if and it's not even about acknowledge. I don't give a fuck if any of these people acknowledge me. Cameron cannot speak to me ever. He doesn't have to say. I don't want a feature from none of these people. I don't need any of that shit. He's already done his job for me. You know what I mean? His influence is already there. I've made it here because of people like him. So I don't need any of them to acknowledge me, yo. If they do, it's great. And that's why I react the way I do. I'm so excited when they do. But, like, it's not necessary. I'm not looking for a handout from them. I'm here to earn my stripes my way because that's how all my heroes did it. I ain't see Cameron being like dick riding anybody. He just did this shit himself. So. Somebody break up the radio for me, yo. Yeah? 
I'm not arguing from a point of ego. I'm arguing from a point of like, why do these people have this power in the first place? If you're bastardizing the art and you don't respect it and you're gonna like half ass it and you know, not respect artists in general and then not respect their art, it's like, why are you even there? You know what I mean? It just confuses me as to why these people can um, make or break artists' career. It's like, what have they done? What have they accomplished? Can they play an instrument? Have they made a hit? Have they made a beat? Did they take all the low end out the synth so that it fits real nice in the beat and that you can hear everything more clearly? No, they don't even know what that is. Like, why do I have to go through these people for my career to work? I'm in a situation where like what I'm talking about and what I was fighting for is, is actively happening. So I'm you know, feeling more calm about it. At the end of the day, these are just useless, shallow people that live in New York and have too much privilege. They shouldn't have the power to make or break any fucking thing. Say whatever, you good. This is just great. I also don't know how long I'm going to be here. <laughs> it's uh, it's low key. Now. It's out the way. It's quiet too. Like it's not all on yeah, the main road. Uh, it's, it's your call, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm like this. Are you good? Yeah. Hold up. Let me back up a little bit more. Alright. We should be good. You know, I started popping up maybe like two years ago, 2018. Around the time when fucking care for me came well, out well, like yeah, yeah. i remember I first yeah all the i saw all the lists like all the little a year end lists yeah. but have like both of our albums <laughs> and shit, so I, you know what i'm saying um but i just started i didn't understand why like if i had some serious shit to say why do i have to go to like the new york times mm. like why do i have to reveal it there why don't i have just i can just say it myself like with all the power we got walk back you slow down a little bit. Oh, we want to do that. I got passion. Okay, okay, okay. You know? Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's like a fake-ass smack DVD. So basically, I just walk around. Straight up walk That's around. crazy that we're in that time. Where yeah. Kids don't know what smack DVD is. Everything we care about is being forgotten. <laughs> I just saw like, something on Instagram that said, did Nelly or ASAP Rocky popularize the Air Force One? Tell me why I scroll past that Breakfast Club video this morning. <laughs> so sad, bro. <laughs> I was like, I was gonna watch it later. On I was the like, huh? this the era we in though. Everything yeah. we cared about as kids is being forgotten. Like, you know, you used to watch maybe Rocco's Modern Life and like Rugrats and blah blah blah. I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a tad bit older than you, so my it's. Shit is a little bit sadder for me. Rocco's Modern <laughs> Life, I didn't really, I, I never really got into. I felt like that was like, like my brother's older. He watched that shit. Yeah. I watched Rugrats though. I mean, that was, you know, that was. Hey, Arnold still holds up, actually. It does, it does. And the music on that shit is fire. Yeah, like that weird ass, skibbity bob ass jazz. Right. <laughs> I used to record on cassettes. You used to record on cassettes? Yeah. Bro, you was recording like you was like the 70s. <laughs> we had no computer, so I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> Yo, was, is yeah. that the first thing you recorded? Of course. Of course. You know, yeah, that shit is, I still got them tapes too. Yeah, mo <laughs> most when most of our earlier shit is like shit you don't want nobody to but hear. But this is like this not even what I consider early shit. This is like me as a child. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> I was like eight, nine or some shit. Bro, so how did like, you even fandangle that joint like that at eight? I don't know, bro. I got like a real musical family, so I just feel like I kind of was just born into doing this shit and taking it serious. Did your your um your family like encourage you when you did music and shit? So because they were like a musical family. Uh yeah, yeah. It was uh I don't know. I guess I I, I learned Mary had a little lamb, right? Yeah, I know. And the I hardest I, shit. The hardest shit. Low right, key. right, right. I learned that shit. Low key. When I was like hella young. Mm. And uh, I played that shit. My grandma had a real piano. I learned that on a toy piano. But my great grandma had a real piano. I played Mary Had a Little Lamb. And she just gave us the piano. So after that, my family was just like, they kind of like respected it. Like, oh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> then my, my pops was a, a, he like does R&B. So yeah. he, I, oh. I was raised with my mom's people. But my pops was always like there doing his R&B thing. And he did that like. As his career, like, so you so, he sweat and shit. <laughs> nah, him probably, him probably, me, not so much. But had after seven bumping right. all day, <laughs> right, right. LB sure, all that shit. shit. No, I feel it. My biggest weapon now is my ear. 
Yeah, like, yeah. out of anything, like, same, that's why I dropped that shit. Yeah, honestly, you know, like, it's, if, when you know the basics and standards, it's like, you can freak it, probably different, but when you really just going straight off the ear, yeah. it's like, no one can replicate what this is, yeah. you know what I mean? No, that's facts. What I learned from classes, I couldn't really apply, because I was like, I'm, you seen Drumline? Oh, yeah. I was like Nick Cannon was memorizing what my uh, teacher was doing and just, and just and pretending like I could read it. But then it got to a point where I couldn't keep it up. Couldn't give up. Like, he uh, stopped, yeah, he stopped. Because how he would do it, he would play it for me. And then I would have to come back the next day and, like, play it. But, I see, I see. You know, it got to a point where I'm like, I can't do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I really only like to produce in loops. And, like, once I got a loop where I like it enough to, like, write to it, that's that's the song and then i'll have other producers like produce it i get what you said a lot of times i'll just do the basic like the skeleton of it okay. that's my shit like doing that shit you get the and nucleus it. of it and, right, you, right, and right. you get other people to build around a lot of a lot of times when it comes to doing like the super musical chords with the like that shit yeah because i just don't know all of that like theory and shit behind that shit the way i started out making music is i got some i got like audacity that free shit, yeah, I remember. Oh. <laughs> so I was on Audacity, and I didn't have no equipment at the time. So, like, all, if, at that time, I made all my songs over samples. So, like, if I had to get a, if I wanted a synth, and most niggas want a synth, they'd be like, ooh, let me load up my synth and pick this synth. If I wanted a synth, I had to listen to a bunch of shit and find something close enough to what's in my fucking head and bend that motherfucker to my will with audacity. <laughs> it, at, at the time, I didn't think nothing of it, but yeah. it just made me like a hard edge sampler nigga. Yeah. Cause like my foundation was just, I have nothing, what can I do? Yeah. What you just described, yeah, like yeah. that, that's gonna come with a sound on its own. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like nobody else shit gonna be able to sound like that regardless of what. And that's where the best shit really comes from. Just like, this is all we got. Or this is all I can, you know what I'm saying? Make from this. Nobody else could do it. Yeah. Like back then, all the up and coming niggas, Ice Cube, De La Soul, Tribe Called Quest, they were all us at some point. Right. Like, they right. had to like fight their way in and like earn their way. So, whatever we do now, 20 years from now, people are gonna be talking about in the same way, like, we looking at trap bar questions, right? Shit. I was thinking about that and thinking about like this is one of the reasons I do this shit. It's cause like, there's power in like us like coming together to Yeah, yeah. Whatever. You know what I mean? A lot of times you don't I realize you don't realize how close a lot of artists are just because that footage don't exist or like yeah, the you fact never that know. there's a community of like artists supporting each other mm -hmm. or like even just talking to each other how we doing right now, like this is the shit that matters way more than yo feature on my song and like yes. Everybody I fuck with, I don't have to fucking like make a song with them or do a yeah. verse. It doesn't have to be all like that. Like there's some people like bro Janelle Monae. Mm -hmm. I've been listening to Janelle Monae for fucking years, bro. Like yeah, I was in a bad place in the military basically. And I remember I was listening to her album that came out at the time, and one of the songs hit me so hard at the time. Which, uh, which album is that? Archangel. Okay. It's this song, Omega. Oh, hell no. Nah. That shit really is the only thing that got me through this shit. I don't ever have to make a song with her. I idolize her, you feel Yeah, me? yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't have to step in the studio with her, nothing. Like, all she, I have uh, to do is walk up to her and tell her, and like, that can be it. Niggas don't have to hop on a verse every time they want to show up. It don't have yeah. to be all like that. Who was it? Who was, was it Quavo? Like Betty White or somebody? Um, it was like Offset and some. It was like Offset. And like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody was set, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. See. Quarantine got us fucked up, yo. Why is was it? Uh, who the fuck was it? Was it Reese Witherspoon? And it was Offset. fucking Reese Witherspoon, <laughs> bro. <laughs> yeah. You know how that shit be. Like you go on one street and it's like, oh my fucking god, it's you. That, bro, and then the next street is like. Who the fuck are you? Yeah. <laughs> that's me, bro. That's I think that's that's most people though. Like that's, you know. Unless you like crazy famous. Unless you snoop famous. When do you think you're gonna fall off? When do I think I'm gonna fall off? <laughs> <laughs> I love when people like I meet rappers, I meet other artists, and I feel like rap is one of those things similar to sports where it's like 
somebody asks you who's your favorite, oh, yeah. there are answers that you have to say. And I always love when people don't, like when they just have their own favorite. Because I feel like there's so much music, it's like, it's so interesting to me that niggas is still uh, Tupac making Jay Z. You know, like, and, and they're great, don't get me wrong, but it's like, motherfuckers just be answering shit because they feel like they You know who I saw? I saw Miranda Cosgrove once. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I didn't realize that I, it was Miranda Cosgrove. We were also getting the sandwich. <laughs> and she's in Yo. front of me in the line. And uh, it was one of those situations where there's more than one line. Yeah. So I have to say something. I'm, excuse me, which line are you in? No, no, no. She was hella cool. Oh, okay. okay. She was cool as fuck. She... No, I didn't even realize that she had a puppy in her hand. So that's what... <laughs> And then when I when I left, I was there with one of my homies, and he came out afterward and was like, <laughs> <laughs> "My name is J. Pe well, I don't I don't anything. That's how noisy I am. <laughs> Yo, I'm J. Pe, Saba, and we're out. That's good shit. Fuck with that. We did it. <laughs>